Welcome to our Arcade Machine Buyer's Guide. In this guide, I'm going to take you through, first of all, what it would be to own one of these retro vintage arcade machines like you see behind us here. We'll talk about buying potentially a brand new arcade machine from manufacturers like Sega or Namco. They're quite expensive, but there's a good range available. But we'll spend most of our time talking about the most popular part of the market, which is the multi-game arcade machines. Those are all brand new ones in either a cabinet or in a cocktail and you can play hundreds of, well, thousands of games on those, and we'll spend most of our time talking about those and the options available to you. Okay, so let's talk about vintage arcade machines, and that's the sort of thing you're seeing along here, made back in, well, the 80s. So you're talking about a piece of kit that's about 40 years old, and as a result, they are di difficult to find in, in good shape, um, difficult ma to maintain, um, and relatively difficult to actually find parts for or to find a specialist repairer for. So it is fraught with difficulty. There's a certain magic about this range of games though. I absolutely love it. I spent my formative years in Seaside Arcade. So uh, there's a lot of nostalgia for me in all of these products and hearing track and field starting a race uh, is part of that. Um, but for all those sort of benefits, the cons are the difficulties of keeping them running. You know, you can't buy CRT monitors anymore, so you're literally looking to try and find an old one. And when you get an old one, probably it's going to have insert coin or similar burnt into the tube. And finding people to actually be able to repair the boards now has become difficult. There are specialists out there, you can go onto the forums and you can find people that can re repair them for you, but those guys tend to be very busy with quite a backlog trying to keep everybody's boards up and running. So it's difficult to find. There's quite a lot available in the States and they're relatively cheap to buy. And there are a number of people that actually bring them over in containers um, and then try and renovate and service them themselves. We keep a very small range of machines ourselves um, and we try to maintain them and keep them up and running, but they are fraught with difficulties. So I guess to summarize the pros and cons, the pro is that there's a certain magic and nostalgia about it. You're playing the actual game on the actual old cabinet and having that old cabinet sat like this Donkey Kong Jr. in your office or in your games room uh, is there's something really nice about that so I think that's the that's the pro the cons are just the ability to try and find the parts and to try and actually keep the machines up and running and really for most people that's sort of too tricky they just want to be able to turn it on play a game and don't have to fiddle about trying to fix the machine and of course you're only going to get one game so you know you've got to love Donkey Kong Jr. to give over that amount of space to be able to play that in your house. So that's it, vintage upright arcade games. Okay, so moving on from the vintage kind of upright cabinets that we're sort of looking at here, but in the similar kind of area, you've got the old driving games. So things like Daytona, Daytona 2, I guess you've got Mario Kart, Sega Rally, um, all those machines that were, I guess, around in the 90s, they're still around to buy, but they are incredibly difficult to maintain. So we've actually stopped doing them now because they weren't really designed to keep going for sort of 20, 30 years. And actually getting them repaired now is very difficult. A number of the boards have got custom chips on that you just can't get. If that custom chip goes, you can't fix it. And you've got a great big machine that's no good to anybody. So we've actually stopped doing those games now, which is a real shame because we used to love just having like a Sega Daytona 2 sat in the showrooms to play on. Um, but sadly, we've had to stop selling those now. So so yeah, so no more Daytona 2 and similar kind of Sega driving machines. Moving on then from sort of vintage stuff, let's talk about brand new dedicated arcade machines. So a dedicated arcade machine is when you buy a Sega machine like one of the brand new Daytonas that they brought out or you buy from Namco, you can get a brand new Mario Kart. So those are dedicated arcade machines, they're brand new, they do take up a massive amount of space. If you're in the market for that, it's worth doing a lot of measuring just to make sure it'll fit into your house. 
We range all the products that come from Sega and Namco. Uh, we can get hold of all of those. If there's a particular machine that you want, we can go and source it for you. We've got a whole load of those on our website. But they are quite expensive. And again, they take up a lot of space. It's a lot of money for just one game. But if that's what you want for your office uh, or for your home games room, we can provide that for you. So at this point, it's worth just touching upon our commercial range and a couple of games that are really cool that we offer to pubs and bars and that type of environment. First one is Golden Tea, with the exclusive distributor for the UK market for this game. It is amazing. If you've ever played it, you'll know how addictive it is uh, to play on. This is the home version. We also do a commercial version, uh, which will either take uh, contactless payments or take coins. So um, it's, that's an amazing game. Check out our dedicated video for that, and you can see what good fun that is. So another great game is Nice Cold Beer. Now this is a recreation of a classic 80s game made by Taito. Uh, sold generally in the States, I've not seen many in the UK. And it involves getting a ball bearing uh, here uh, through the holes. So I'll give you a bit of a demo of it. We've got a full video so you can understand all the full details on there. But this is great fun uh, for a commercial venue. It actually spits out tickets down here. So if you can get all seven balls through their relevant holes, it'll uh, spit out a ticket and you can then take that to the bar if they're operating this, but you can take it to the bar and they give you a free beer, which is why it's called Nice Cold Beer. Okay, so we're on to our main part of our buyer's guide now, which is the brand new multi-game arcade machines. I'm gonna go through all the different formats of machine that you can go for. So whether you wanna go for handheld, uh, a console that you can plug into your TV, a cocktail, or an upright. And I'll take you through the different manufacturers that are available, so either Arcade Pro, Game Pro, or Bespoke Arcades, and talk you through the different models that are available in those ranges. Okay, so let's take you through the different formats of machine that we offer. Let's start talking about the handheld that we do first of all, and that's called the Luna. It comes with over 1,600 games on there and it emulates the old consoles, so things like Super Nintendo and Mega Drive, old handhelds like Game Boy Advance and that sort of thing, Sega Game Gear is on there as well, and gives you a really good uh, run down the kind of retro style of gaming, but in a portable format. So the next format then is our TV console. This one's called the Mercury, and it's actually, I mean, it's an amazing piece of uh, kit. Uh, it's our best-selling product uh, by far in the arcade range. Why is it so popular? Well, it doesn't take up too much space, so you can just stick it on your coffee table, stick it on your lap, it just plugs into your TV through an HDMI cable that comes with it. We actually supply it with a seven meter cable, so you've got plenty of space to run it to your TV. And it's got proper joysticks, proper arcade buttons, so it plays really well. We always spec all of our arcade Pro range with the best of everything, so best sound, best joysticks, best boards, best everything. Uh, so it plays really well and it comes loaded with literally thousands of games on there. So it's mainly old arcade games, uh, but you can play relatively recent games on there as well. A load of 3G, 3D games are on there, and it plays some of the uh, retro console games on there as well. So it's a great piece of kit and very, very popular. So next format then is our desktop format, which uh, this model is called the Proteus. And it's nice and small, uh, has two screens and two sets of joysticks and buttons. So it's great for just sticking onto your coffee table, dining room table, breakfast bar, somewhere where you haven't got too much space, but it gives you the proper arcade experience. So it's got obviously got its own screen, so you don't need to plug it into your family TV. So you can go off, go and play away and enjoy some retro gaming delights without having to disrupt the rest of your household. Next format then is bar top. So in this range, we've got the Arcade Pro Venus. And this is designed to be able to sit on, I guess, your coffee table. You could put it in your office and put it on the desk. You put it on your dining room table, breakfast bar. It's a bit bigger than the Proteus we were talking about before. So it's got a larger screen. It's got the two sets of joysticks side by side. So you can game side by side with a friend of yours. Um, and it's a really nice, big, full size, heavy. So it's very sturdy uh, piece of arcade cabinet. So we keep on going up the sizes. Next is cocktail. So a cocktail cabinet is this sort of table. So you used to find these back in pubs in the early 80s. I remember playing Gallagher on one in a pub. Uh, we do a number of different formats, either with the joysticks on the front, um, or you've got them on either side here. They're very popular for people that don't have too much space and don't want to take up a lot of room on their wall with a large upright cabinet. Uh, and they still come packed with absolutely stacks of games. So it's worth looking at if you don't take up too much space, but you want something quite sturdy. And of course, you can pop your drinks on there as well. 
Next up, up from the cocktail, but before you get to an upright, is the new gen style. So this you can sit on a stool like I'm sat on here. The joysticks and buttons are flat, which means you've actually got a surface you can pop your drink on, but the screen is actually facing you, so it's quite comfortable to sort of sit out and play on that type of machine. It's got a lovely great big screen, so the graphics look fantastic on there, and it's a really quite nice format between cocktail and upright. And the final format is upright, so it's the arcade machine like this. Upright, you can see why it'd be called upright. They come in with a variety of different screen sizes and size of cabinets. So you can try and find a machine that actually fits into the space that you've got. Obviously, most people want to have the bigger screen that they can get, but the bigger the screen, the bigger the cabinet that goes with it. And I'll take you through the range of different options we've got with that. We even do one that comes with a fridge built in, which is rather cool, literally. Okay, so let's go through the three different ranges that we've got. So we've got Arcade Pro, Game Pro, and Bespoke Arcades. Arcade Pro then, first of all, that's our most popular format of machine. We sell literally thousands of these, and they're in all the different formats I've just gone through, come with absolutely stacks of games. We've actually got a dedicated video that takes you through the entire Arcade Pro range and explains all the different types that we do and the benefits and uses you might put each of those two. So check out that video, and that'll run you through that range. The Game Pro range, again, is our own brand, and that enables you to actually customize the machine if you want to. Now, the machine I've got by my side here is one of those. We've got some custom graphics on there. So if you wanted to get an arcade machine that doesn't come with our rather striking sort of neon style finishes, you'd rather have one that's maybe got your company logo on there or some other design that you'd like to have, then the Game Pro range enables you to be able to customize the finishes on there. You can also customize things like joysticks and buttons. Um, you can change the marquee. You can see we've got a serious fun marquee on that one there. But you could change that as well to a different marquee if you wanted to. Just tell us what it is you're after and I'm sure we'll be able to sort out whatever you need. So that's the Game Pro range. You then go up to the Bespoke Arcade range and this is really, it's quite a bit more expensive but these are really high-end, well-specified machines that are very customizable. So by their name, Bespoke Arcades enable you to again be able to change the buttons, joysticks, you can add spinners to them. So a spinner rotates if you wanted to be able to play a game like Arkanoid, for example, or Tempest. You can get a trackball on there. So if you wanted to play um, Marble Madness or Missile Command, for example, then we can fit those on there. So if you've got a specific game that needs a specific type of controller, the Bespoke Arcade range caters for that for you. And I'll take you through the different options in that range in a moment. Right, so let's have a look at the bespoke arcade range of machines. And so this is the, the, the top end that I was mentioning earlier on. And you've got the three different formats. So you've got a cocktail, which is the Synergy. Then you move on to the new gen, which is where you can sit at it with a stall, and you've got the flat surface with your joysticks and buttons on where you can pop a drink. And then you move on up to the upright. So these come in two different formats. You've got the Apex and you've got the Evo. The difference is literally is in the size and the size of the screen and how much room there is on the control panel for you to get sort of two people side by side. So it really depends upon what amount of space you've got, where you're wanting to locate the machine as to whether the Apex is going to be better for you or whether you want to go for the Evo. Now, each of those machines all come in three different types of power, let's put it like that. So you either get play, media, or elite. And the difference is really is play is just designed for playing games, but the more sort of basic ones, it doesn't really uh, cater for the very high end, more powerful games. So that's the play. Then you've got media, where it comes with a drive on the front, which you can see there, enables you to be able to play CDs, DVDs. It's got a better sound system in there, and it's got a better processor. When you move to the Elite, you're really getting a much bigger hard drive, more games, because it's capable of running the more powerful and graphically intense games on there. So those are the three different sizes. If you want to find out more about the Bespoke Arcades range, then we have a dedicated video that takes you through far more detail than I've just run through now, so check that out uh, either on our YouTube uh, site or on our website. Okay, so I hope that has helped. It's given you a good run through the different formats, different types of machine. We absolutely love arcade machines. We've got the biggest and best range in the country, and we really specialize in this type of product. So if you've got any more questions, which you probably have having watched this, then there's plenty more videos either on our YouTube channel or on our website. There's detail, detailed product videos as well uh, in each of our product listings on the website. If you want to come down and have a play, come down and play to your heart's content in our showrooms in Bristol, or you can always just give our guys a call and they can talk you through all the different options and explain everything to you in more detail. So I hope you've enjoyed this and look forward to catching you next time.